Welcome, welcome, welcome to Learning Reaper. I'm your host, x.e.l.o. Today, what I want to do is actually talk about the M sequencer made by Arthur McArthur. He's the person who wrote the script. Big shout outs to him. I'm going to show you how to actually install the plugin, where to actually go to get it, and where you need to go inside of Reaper to make sure it actually is working for you. And then we'll probably make a beat afterwards. Let's get into it. All right, so here we are in Reaper and this theme is called Reaper Tips. Uh, if you do want this layout like I have it here, I do have a reconfiguration file on my website, xeloh.com. The link should be below in the description of this video as well. And you'll have this exact same layout like I have here. And it'll also come with, it'll also come with the mix sequencer already set up inside of the reconfiguration file. But let me show you how to actually do it inside of Reaper if you haven't done it yet. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is actually go to the site. You have a link below in the description of this video, and it's gonna take you to this page here, which is basically the Reaper forum. So inside the forum, he has it right here, Arthur McArthur, big shout outs to him. As you see here, it says now available in Reapack. So basically you can just copy this link. So you can just right click and copy link address, and then you just go back into Reaper. And you wanna have, you have to have the SWS and Reapack extension already installed. I do have a video showing you how to do that if you wanna, if you don't have yours already set up. But like I said, if you do want the reconfiguration file, I have it on my website, all right? So we go here and then you wanna go to Reapack and you wanna go to import repository. So once you're in here, all you do is copy and you're just pasting the same link and you hit okay. And it's gonna actually load the repository into Reaper. All right, and as you can see here, I already have it installed. There was no need for me to reinstall it right now, but this is where you would actually see it inside of your managed repositories. And just make sure that you do install it. So you wanna make sure you import all the stuff from the author author, and you'll be ready to go. All right, so now that we have that installed, uh, if you, like I said, if you do get reconfiguration file that I have on the website, all you have to do is click right here where it has a little step looking options, just click on there and it'll bring up. All right, so what I did forget is that some people may not actually have my reconfiguration file, which I don't know why you wouldn't do it. You can download it from my website. But if you do happen to need to get to the M sequencer after you install it, you wanna go up here to where it says actions and you wanna to go to show action list. And once you're in the action list, you just go up here and you type in MCSE. Q and you'll see the author author one. Uh, so this is the one, this one here is the one that you would use. I have two of them in here because I believe I had the older version, which is the 1.03. So this is the newer one and you just hit run and it'll actually open up the mix sequencer just like I am doing inside this video right now. The mix sequencer. Right now I have it docked down here in this bottom section. You don't have to have it docked. You can undock it if you want to, but I'm just gonna leave it docked for now. It'll make it a little easier for me to kind of explain everything so I don't have to move around too much. All right, so first thing you see is a pattern and it gives you the length of that pattern. So if you wanna actually change the pattern length, you can just click in here and you can just drag across and it'll make the pattern up to four bars. So right now it's up to four bars on here which is always cool, All right? But if you only wanted two bars, you can still do two bars, which would be 32. So basically it is going by the eight, eights on here, All right? So here is your pattern. So as you move this, you can see the mouse cursor actually moves with it. So that's another way to kind of find your position of where you want the mouse cursor to actually be or start. And the first one is doesn't have anything in it right now, and it gives you an option to drag files here to create tracks, or you can hit on this plus sign to add tracks if you had tracks already set up inside of Reaper. Uh, we'll get over, we'll get into that a little bit later on in this video as well. If you haven't already, make sure you download my Smash Kit. It is absolutely free. It's on my website. You can check it out, xeloh.com. All right, so we have our first kick on here. So here, over here is where you actually see the sound and you can click on the sound over here to hear what the sound is. It also goes on your keyboard if you have it set up that way. So what we will need to do is just make sure that this is set 
to input MIDI, so let's put it on all MIDI for right now. So it'll transpose the kick all the way down the line. So another cool option that you do have if you want to use this inside of Reaper as well. All right, so now that we have the kick in here and we can hear the kick over here, I guess we'll start on this side just to make it a little easier for you guys. So if you wanna go backward or forward to find your sounds, you can go forward and it'll add a different sound. I have, I've created databases for my kicks, snares, hi-hats, so all of them are in separate databases. So if I scroll through here, this is all the kicks that I have inside this database, right? And if I do a roll of the dice, it'll pick a random one inside that database, right? You also have an option to open it up with the file so you can pick your samples from here. And as you see, it'll pull up those samples and you can pull it from wherever you have your samples on your computer. This is just another way to actually do that. And if you click here, this will actually bring up the RS5K so that you can see the actual sound in here, right? And you can do any kind of changes that you need to make on here. If it was like an 808 and you didn't want the max voices to be eight, you can make it one. So this is a cool way to kind of set things up uh, as well, right? So you have your volume, your pan, your boost, your start and your end point. So you can change your end point. As you can see a little line going, you can change the end point of the kick. You can change the start of the kick as well. If you want to start a little earlier or later, right? You have an option to boost. So this will make it louder. Right? You have an option to pan and here is the volume for the kick here. All right, and here is the option to pitch the sound. So if you wanted to pitch the sound itself, you you can do that right here. You can do a roll of the dice for it. You can go by ones or you can go by twelves to pitch the sound, All right? You have your attack, your decay, sustain, and release. So if you want to do a release for the sounds, you can do it right here. You can do offsets of your sound right here as well. You can do an offset to make it later, All right? And you also have an option to swing the set as well. So if you do need to put a swing on your drums or anything, this would be the swing knob right here at the bottom. All right. So now that we going over this part, let's go over this left part over here. So you have your options at the top. You can click on this. It gives you an option for preferences. So if you wanted to uh, change the font size on here, you can change the font size and you can change the sidebar font size, which is the stuff over here. All right. So it gives you an option to, uh, track your time signature markers. So if you have any kind of time signatures inside of your track, you can actually track them right here. And your time resolution is basically giving you like how many dots or cubes you have here. So let's say you wanted to do like a fast hi-hat, you can do eight, right? So you have eight spots to kind of put those hi-hats in there instead of just four. But I like to leave it on four, just make it real simple and plain. And that is, basically the preferences that you have in there for this mix sequencer, All right? So I'm gonna add a kick in here. And once you add a kick, you can just click one time with your left mouse click button. And if you wanna remove it, you just hit the right click and it'll remove that note from the mix sequencer, All right? So you have this here to expand your slider. So this is where you can actually do your velocity you can do your pitch and you can do your offset right here from this little drop down. So if you needed to change the volume of the kicks, you can do that here. If you wanted to offset the kicks and do it at a different time, you can do that here as well. Just click on offset and you can change the offset time going forward or backwards, which is pretty cool. Um, really good if you're actually using it for uh, drums. You have an option for pitch as well. So you can just do the pitch here as well. So you can go up or down in the pitch right from this step sequencer, which is really cool. So you have your mute, you have your solo, you have your volume here as well. And here is your pan, so your left and right pan is here. So all that is right here inside of the mix sequencer. So that's really easy to kind of set up and use. If you have like a certain drum kit that you want to use, you can always have one set up and then save it. So let's kind of make one real quick and show you.
All right. So I've added a clap, a hi hat, and open hat, and one perk inside here, just to kind of make it really simple and easy to kind of uh, get this going. So I'm going to add a clap just to kind of show you guys really quickly. So if I wanted to do my hi hats, and let's say we wanted to do every two steps, you can just right click on the sound itself, and it gives you an option to to clone or duplicate. So I'm, I'm gonna duplicate it just so you guys can see, All right? And I wanna actually do uh, every, let's do every two steps for this one. Let's click on this one. And I wanna change this hi-hat. I don't want it to be this one. I wanted to change it to a different one. So I'm gonna hit this dice and have it give me a different hi-hat. And for this hi-hat, I'm gonna do it every four steps. And what I wanna do with this one is offset it. Right, so I'm gonna offset this one and let's make it a little bit behind. Right, so we have those offset. And I also probably wanna change the velocity of these other ones. So let's go to this one here. And we're gonna change these velocities. Let's just do, you know, just click and drag across and it'll change the velocity. If you want to do it just manually by one by one, you can do it like this. You can click in here and just, it'll go to wherever you click. So really easy to kind of get a nice little groove on here. Uh, let's do a little bit of a offset for these as well. All right, so we have some offsets on there and doing an open hat. And we're just gonna kind of see where we can kind of put these, let's do Something like that. Um, all right, so we have a simple drum pattern that we just created. All right, so we have the option to kind of do that in here, which is pretty cool. So if we wanted to, we can um, do like a little bit of roll right here in the beginning of this one. And let's do some pitches. So we're gonna, let's pitch this one down. Let's go here, let's pitch this one down. And we're gonna do one right before the snare. Right. And let's do one more here. So there's some simple hi hats I've added in there to kind of give it a little bit of a. Right. So you have the option to kind of do like a pitch shift with your hi-hats in here as well. I thought that was really cool. Uh, and then you can just, you know, make the rest of the beat if you want to. Um, if you wanted to add like a regular sound, you can add another instrument in here. All right, I'm gonna use a free one. Let's go with Iota Mini. Uh, let's see if we can find a cool sound. Let's do a pluck. Right, cool. So we have uh, some plucks in here. What I wanna do is add an effect down here and let's go with Ripcord real quick. If you don't know how to use Ripcord, it is something that you should get. It is a very, very nice option to have in your arsenal. All right. Right, so it just gives me some options to kind of do that. So let's say I wanted to add this IOTA Mini into this uh, step sequencer. I can just click on this plus sign, seeing that it's highlighted is gonna bring it into the step sequencer. And now you see the IOTA Mini down here.
right? So you can just open this up inside the MIDI editor, kind of pull stuff over. I think I may have started a little bit too late. All right, right now I have it on triplets. Let's change that into <laughs> a straight grid. Uh, let's do the one sixteenth. Let's see if it'll quantize for us. Right, so we have something cohesive in here, really simple uh, that we can kind of use how we like to inside here as well. So, all right, so now that you have all these things laid out on here, let's say you wanted to keep this drum pattern or drum set that you have here. Uh, of course, Reaper makes that really easy. You could just kind of click on the top and then click on the bottom one hold down shift and click on this one so all of them are highlighted or you can just do a control all over here and then you just right click and you want to do save tracks as track template right so you click on that and right now this is my reaper track template so you can make your own folder if you wanted to uh, i'm just going to make a simple one in here let's call it all right, so let's call it YouTube McSequencer1. So if you wanted to, you can include the items in the template and you can include the envelopes uh, in the template as well. So the track items would be like, if you wanted to keep the MIDI that's actually in there, this is what you would check on. If you wanted to actually just keep like any kind of envelopes that you did, you can click on this one and it'll actually keep that on here. I don't need to keep those. So I'm just going to hit save. All right. So let's say we start another project. And with the mix sequencer pulled up, I can right click in here and I can go to insert from track template. And I'm going to use the YouTube and sequencer and boom, it'll pull it up in here exactly how I had it in the other one. So now you have all your sounds and instruments on here so you can actually make another beat super simple. Yeah, so this is just a little breakdown of how to actually use the mix sequencer inside of Reaper. If you guys have like any questions or concerns about it, definitely let me know below in the comment section of this video. But yeah, that's pretty much it. You can add different things in here, different elements. You can actually have um, different chops and things like that in there as well. It's almost giving you the FL feel without actually being FL, if you know what I mean. But with that being said, that's pretty much the end of this one. Make sure you guys are liking and subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, definitely check out my website, xeloh.com. You can get a whole bunch of different things on there. There's some free things and some things to pay for, but it is there and available for you guys to check out. All right. Once again, I just want to thank you guys for watching Learning Reaper. Till next time, people. Peace. Hey, you. Yes, you. YouTube wants you to watch this video next, man. Go ahead and click it. I'll wait. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. I'm not going to keep waiting here. All right. I will see you in the next video, though. Peace.